Today we'll be looking at the living saint herself. Let's see what Saint Celestine can do on the table. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, the Astrastian Tactics Focus 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. We're continuing in our look at the Sisters Codex datasheets today, with an in-depth look at Saint Celestine, from her datasheet to any obvious rule synergies and combos on the battlefield, and how we could go about using her and her Gemini in-game. Now, Celestine was a very popular model when she was released in the Triumvirate of the Imperium, along with the Fall of Cadia supplement in 7th edition. A really nice reimagining of the model in my opinion, and she very much set the tone for what the new Plastic Sisters of Battle could be. In the background, Celestine rose to greatness from the rank of a Sister Repentia of the Order of Armata Lady. After fighting a bloody battle against the heretics of the Palatine Schism, Celestine was thought to have died, but when placed on the funeral pyre it was found that her wounds had been miraculously healed and life still breathed in her yet. Returning to the fighting once more as the spiritual figurehead of the Crusade, her and the Sisters of Basil cut a bloody rank through the heretics. Later in the fighting, on liberating the backwater planet of Sanctus Lys, she uncovered the Shrine of St. Catherine of the Order of the Fiery Heart. After waiting within the shrine for an entire night, Celestine reappeared in the morning, clad in the golden armour of St. Catherine and bearing the ardent blade, a sword that burnt so bright that none could bear to look at it. From then on, she was hailed as a living saint, the fiery light of the Emperor burning behind her eyes. Over the years, she has disappeared and reappeared a few times, most recently returning at the fall of Cadia, at which she personally engaged and wounded Abaddon the Despoiler. Throughout the Imperium, there are many guardsmen and sisters of battle alike, who pray to the Emperor that Celestine may arrive to assist and deliver them from the conflicts that they are embroiled in. So a heroic backstory indeed. Let's see how she does when she's on the tabletop. So Celestine is an HQ choice for Codex Sisters of Battle, and she'll cost you 160 points to field on the tabletop. She can potentially be fielded alongside her two Gemini Superior, who act as a separate unit, have a separate data sheet, and they each cost 20 points. Celestine has an impressive stat line, with a movement of 12 with Fly for her jump pack, Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 2+, Strength and Toughness 3, 6 Wounds, 6 Attacks, Leadership 9, and a 2-up save, which is further boosted by a 4-up in full save. She's armed with the Ardent Blade, a Strength plus 4, AP minus 3, 2 damage melee weapon, meaning that she'll be happily cutting apart heavy infantry and light vehicles with that mighty strength of 7, and it can also be fired in the shooting phase with the same profile as a heavy flame, so that's range 8, assault d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1, and auto hitting. Having a little bit of anti-infantry oomph with the ardent blade in shooting is really handy for her, just to chip away at enemy troops here and there as she wades into combat. She augments this mighty profile with some special rules, as normal, she has the Axe of Faith special rule and Shield of Faith, which can be used to deny some powers. She has the Healing Tear special rule, which means at the start of your movement phase, if she's within 3 inches of her Gemini Superior, she can either heal one of them by one wound, back up to their normal maximum of 2, or she can set up one Gemini Superior that was slain earlier in the game, who comes back with all of their wounds intact. Pretty handy for keeping her bodyguards alive and kicking although as the Gemini Superior don't really have that much toughness or defence between them, there is at least a small chance they might just get wiped straight out before you even have chance to do these healing tears. Moving on, she has the Saintly Blessing special rule. This increases the Invul Save ability of the Shield of Faith by 1 for any Adeptus Auroritus units within 6 inches of her. And furthermore, it improves the Gemini Superior's Shield of Faith rule by 2 to a maximum of 4+. In addition, any friendly Adeptus Ministorum or Astra Militarum units that aren't Adeptus Auroritus also get a 6 plus Invul save while they're within 6 inches of Celestine, which can be quite handy if she's fighting alongside some allies, say a lot of infantry guardsmen, meaning that at least they'll get some save even against high AP weapons. Finally, just to prove that she is truly a living saint, she has the Miraculous Intervention special rule, which allows you to roll a dice the first time that she's reduced to 0 wounds, and on a 2 plus you set her up all over again at the end of that phase with full wounds restored. And as close to her previous position, that's more than 1 inches away from enemy models. It's absolutely definitely worth making sure there's a command point spare for this roll if you think that she's likely to cop it this phase, as you really don't want to be caught short when you naturally roll a 1 for one of the most important rolls in the game. This is honestly a really powerful ability, meaning that she's actually really quite tough for her points behind what's essentially normally going to be 12 wounds at a 2-up armor save and 4-up imbol, even if she is toughness 3. The fact that she can never really be killed within one phase is also pretty powerful, 
meaning that you can absolutely guarantee that she's going to survive any one given fight phase or any one given shooting phase, provided she gets back up at the end of it. It could potentially be very handy for holding a last minute objective or keeping her alive somewhere close to the enemy army that by all rights she should get shot dead. It did used to be a lot more powerful when she'd come back anywhere you wanted on the battlefield as well, but sadly those days are behind us. So overall Celestine is a pretty much the fightiest Adeptus Aurora's character. She's decently fast and gives out one of those important bubbles of plus one to shield of faith saves, meaning that she's usually going to be happiest being in the centre of your army, improving its durability, and then charging out forward when a target rears its head. If we turn to look at her Gemini now, these girls are 20 points, and you can include either one or two of them in one unit, and you can't field multiple units of them. Like Celestine, they have a 12 inch movement with their jump packs, they have weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength and toughness 3, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9 and a 3 up save. Unlike Seraphim and Zephyrin, they don't have any innate buffs to their shield of faith save, so they're going to be on a 6 up invul or a 4 up invul if they're near Celestine. They're each armed with power swords, bolt pistols and frag and crack grenades. Don't get me wrong, power swords aren't bad, they'll certainly be able to chip into melee combat damage but they're not exactly overwhelming for their points cost, with 6 power sword attacks between the two of them. On average that's only one dead tactical marine, or one wound on an intercessor, so I wouldn't go expecting them to do any wonders in close combat really. Their primary function is to be bodyguards of Celestine, which they can do with their life ward special rule, which when Celestine is within 3 inches of them, and would lose any wounds as a result of an attack, on a 2 plus they can choose to take a mortal wound instead of have Celestine suffer the wound. This can be pretty handy, particularly as Celestine can put them back up with her healing tears next turn, so overall they just make Celestine into a much tougher little living saint on the battlefield. They are a small unit of characters, which means that they can be screened by other Adeptus Sororitas or any other units, which is pretty handy as often it's very easy just to gun down bodyguards with conventional firepower, and the character targeting rules will prevent that. Finally, their last special rule is Divine Guardians. If your army is battleforged, this unit does not take up a slot in a detachment that includes Celestine, and they can't have Warlord traits and relics. I would treat them as primarily a durability buff for Celestine, and if they happen to cause any damage along the way, then that's an added bonus. I'm honestly in two minds as to whether or not they're actually worth their points though, rather than just bringing Celestine herself and having a few more points to spend on other things. For me, they're a bit of a take or leave option. They do do reasonable work when you include them, but I don't think that they're mandatory by any means. So that's a brief rundown of Celestine and her Gemini, let's take a look at what they can do with any buffs and synergies that the sisters have to offer. Celestine unfortunately won't get an order conviction, but you can include her in any detachment without it breaking the order conviction for the units within it. She can however benefit from sacred rites, of which the passion is probably the most beneficial to her, giving her extra hits on a roll of 6, Hand of the Emperor for a bonus charge, and Divine Guidance for a couple of extra heavy flamer hits aren't the end of the world either though. If you choose to give her a Warlord trait, then Celestine has the Beacon of Faith one, the one that allows you to get a Miracle Dice at the start of each one of your turns. It's certainly by no means a bad one, but I'd certainly consider that it might just be worth putting this on a backfield support character rather than Celestine herself, so you're not feeling quite as worried about throwing her up and get her in close combat to put that very nice ardent blade to work. In terms of support from other characters, Celestine herself can benefit from the missionary's extra attacks and the re-roll to wound rolls from Junith Arita, though not the re-roll ones to hit. Hospitalis can also be decent support to her if they can keep up with her, as they can heal her for d3 wounds, which further makes her into a very hard character to kill. She has particularly strong synergy with the indomitable belief warlord trait, as between that and her aura, any friendly Adeptus Sororitas infantry will be having invulnerable saves of 4+, which is just so much better than the 5+, plus that they would have with just Celestine. You can also achieve a similar effect with Junith Arita as well, having 4+, plus invuls just make the sisters a lot harder to remove. In terms of stratagems, as always, Moment of Grace could be used for a key saving throw, particularly if it's going to be one that's very high damage. Holy Rage could allow her to make a very long charge, allowing her to even charge after advancing the same turn. Martyrs could be used if she is being used as your warlord and she does die to gain a few more command points. Judgment of the Faithful could certainly surprise an opponent when they think that they've tied up Celestine with a tar pit unit. This one allows her to fall back and then charge again, meaning that she could still pick and choose the combat that she wanted, even if she's in the middle of a big horde or something. And finally, definitely don't forget about the command point reroll to reroll the dice to see whether she stands up with six wounds again. 
Honestly, if I thought I was going to lose her in that turn, I wouldn't be using command rerolls to reroll saving throws, unless you're feeling a bit gutsy with trying to make that 2 up roll. In game, I think that Celestine is strongest when used as part of an Adeptus Auroritus gunline that's advancing up towards the midfield. The plus one to the armor saves and shield of faith is certainly no joke, and by just having her there as a scary melee threat would really mean that people have to think twice about engaging your Basil sisters in close combat, unless they just want to be put to the ardent blade. So depending on the match, I would typically play a little bit cautiously with her for the first turn or two. By then she should be in a better position to make some key charges, and maybe try and finish off an important enemy character or demon prince or something. Because she does have the option to come back when she dies, you can afford to be just a little bit more gung-ho with her towards the end of the game. As if it looks like you're losing the game, keeping her back in reserve really isn't going to achieve much. In an ideal world, she wants to be jumping forward, flaming some light infantry, and then charging an enemy character or elite infantry squad. But could certainly also put some hurt on toughness 7 or 6 vehicles as well. I wouldn't forget about cover while she advances up. As infantry, it's very easy to get her a cover save, and with a 2 plus armor save, this really could make the difference between your opponent having to expend a fair bit more firepower to take care of her. If you are running her with the Gemini Superior, I'd personally just run them along with her, and treat them as extra batteries for wounds. Certainly don't be afraid to kill one of them off, and then maybe start taking some wounds on Celestine herself, so hopefully she can set up one of the Gemini Superior back up again with those healing tears next turn. In general, with her good movement, decent melee, and being stubbornly hard to kill, Celestine most certainly has the ability to be a real thorn in your opponent's side for a lot of the game, and she has the potential to be quite an intimidating threat until she is removed. I certainly think that she's a competitive option in a pure Sisters of Battle army list, being one of the only decent characters in melee, and having her other buffs and synergies. If you've had any success using her on the field of battle since the new codex dropped, Please let me know down in the comments. I certainly had fun with her towards the start of 8th edition, back when Acts of Faith could allow you to move a ridiculous amount of movement per turn and then still charge. She maybe isn't quite as game-breaking as she once was, but nonetheless, she's still a very scary threat on the tabletop. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics for more Sisters of Battle content. We also have other regular 40k content coming out every single day. And if you'd like to support the channel, I do have an Element Games affiliate link down in the description below. Basically, if you're thinking about ordering some Warhammer and you live in the UK, if you click that link before ordering, then a small portion of the profits goes to Auspex Tactics without costing you any more. So if you are enjoying the videos, please consider giving that link a click before you next order some model soldiers in. In any case, thank you very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you in the next episode.